Hey there guys, today's gonna be the part two video of the shipping container shop awning 2.0 rebuild. The first video I did about three months ago where I tore down the old awning and today I'm gonna to show you how I built the new structure that you see now that's out of all steel and it's nothing like the first version of the awning that I made out of an old mining pallet. So now I will show you how I put this up and then I'll talk about things to come uh, after that. Now because the first part of this project was from a couple of months ago, I'll just do a quick little recap to get you guys caught up. I originally built this awning out of an old mining pallet at the same time that I built the shop. And while the price was right, meaning it was virtually free, I just was never very happy with it. So ultimately I decided to tear it down and also dig out the original footers that I poured. And that is what I did in the last video. I tore the awning down and poured some new footers for the new steel structure that I'll be putting up in this video. After my concrete footers were fully cured, the first step in building the steel framework was to start off by making some base plates that my steel posts for the awning would be mounted to. And to do this, I simply made a wooden template that matched the anchor bolts on the footers and I put it on some quarter inch steel and then I used my plasma cutter to cut out the holes and luckily they ended up matching pretty well. Once I had my base plates finished, then it was time to start cutting the pieces that would make up the posts and the beam of the awning structure. And for this, I'm using five inch by five inch by eighth inch thick steel tubing. And believe it or not, I didn't pay anything for this as I got it in a trade with my buddy Troy. I had some old really heavy duty eye beams that he had a use for, and he had this tubing that was gonna work out a little bit better for my project. So I guess the moral to that story is before you buy something, you might want to check and see if your neighbors have uh, something that you need. All right, so at this point, everything is clamped into place. I have the posts clamped onto my workbench and then I have them setting in position over the base plates and everything is pretty much ready to be welded together. So that's what I'm gonna do right now and then once everything is cooled down, I'll probably clean the rust off of most of these uh, posts and then I'll paint probably three quarters of it, mount them on the concrete footers and then I'll get ready to put the, the top beam on. And I'm sure some of you have noticed that this metal is just a bit rusty, but it's usually not a problem. Any place where I'm gonna weld, I will use a wire wheel to clean it off down to bare metal. And then when I'm getting ready to paint, I will also either use a wire wheel or a flap disc like I'm using right here, just to clean off all the rust and they both do a great job. Once I get all the rust cleaned off, I'll then finish it off with some mineral spirits just to clean off any oils that may be remaining. And then I will top it all off with some Rust-Oleum primer. And recently I've been liking this high performance enamel a lot. After waiting a couple of days for the paint to cure, I then placed the posts onto the footers and spent the better part of an hour making sure everything was nice and plumb. And then finally secured everything down with some washers and nuts. And then my father-in-law came over and helped me put the top beam on. Then after that, it's pretty much just all welding.
And it's going to go three, two, two one. one, you're on. Here's my dad grinding the metal, and I think he's doing a very good job. Now he's going to be silly and doing some pull-ups, and wait. Now he's hanging upside down without one hand. I can hang upside down without two hands on my gymnastics bar. Yes, you can. Oh man, enough with the horsing around. I'll get back to the video. I just finished up all of the framework in the same paint and primer that I started with on the lower portions of the posts. Uh, but I never showed you guys the color because Rust-Oleum actually gave me my own custom color. It's called Homestead Anomics Gray. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm horsing around again. Uh, those are actually custom labels given to me by Joshua from the Gander Flight YouTube channel. So thanks, Joshua. And finally, after the paint had cured for a few days, I went ahead and installed the new awning joists using mostly the same hardware that I already had on hand from the first version of the awning. They're just simple brackets uh, that you would get from any big box store that are made for porches or awnings. And the only change I really made from the first version on this is that I used two by sixes this go around, whereas the first time I had used two by fours, so definitely a bit beefier. After that was installed, I then installed the fascia board and the rest of the roof decking. I covered it in an underlayment and then installed the roofing, but I don't really have any clips of showing that because it was starting to get pretty windy and I didn't have a dedicated person to hold the camera. So I just uh, powered through during the wind and I'll show you a couple clips of the roofing now. Good girl, yeah. All right, so after that mind-bending display of acrobatics and physics of a 220-pound guy swinging around like a seven-year-old child, I'm gonna call the shop awning 2.0 as done. And I am totally stoked with the way it turned out. My only regret is that I didn't build it out of steel the first time around, but I guess that's just a lesson learned. Uh, shouldn't have built it out of a uh, mining pallet the first time when I even had the slightest bit of a suspicion that I might not be happy with it. But it's done now and it's gonna serve the exact same purpose as the first version did. Now, one of the things that I didn't address in this video is the area above the shop that's wrapped in that gray weather fabric. Um, I mentioned in the last shop video that I'm still just kind of debating what I want to clad that area in. It was originally clad in kind of a redwood fence board and I loved the way it looked, but uh, I just went the cheap route by getting fence boards and eventually they started cracking and warping and it didn't look so great. So uh, I still have that yet to do, but I will probably do that at the same time that I uh, hang gutters on uh, the front side of the shop and the back side and then get all the rainwater plumbing um, set up to go into that cistern. Um, and so that'll probably uh, be one whole video. I probably won't really show much of putting whatever <laughs> I put up there up. But uh, anyway, that will eventually be addressed. As for what is to come next, uh, I guess specifically related to the shop, I will be doing some more interior stuff um, I never really got around to organizing like my workbench drawers. Uh, so a lot of the stuff is just cluttered in there. So it'll probably be some smaller projects like that. Um, I mentioned a couple videos ago that I'm gonna be doing some gardening stuff. I will get to a greenhouse update. 
Um, but the project that I am really super stoked about is a project that I'm going to be working on with the Drill Doctor and WorkSharp Tools. I am going to be attempting to make a knife out of a saw blade. If you search online, you'll see it's kind of a cool project and I've got a few old saw blades that I really have no use for. So I'm going to make a knife or two or an ax or something, but I think I'm gonna go with the knife. So I thank you guys as always for watching. Give me a thumbs up if you like this. Hit the subscribe button, do the notification thing if you wanna see future videos. And uh, oh, check me out on Instagram. We'll see you next time.